All right, Brush Monkeys, we're back, and this week we're taking a look at the Adeptus Sororitas Hospitaller. This is what she looks like. This figure was sent to me by a fan. Um, I told you I wasn't going to forget about you. You might remember I did a PSA. Uh, damn, okay, it's been almost a year um, <laughs> that I did the PSA. Uh, saying that I'd gotten it in the mail. I got it with this gift receipt that says, from a fan. Um, so I don't know who sent it. I don't know. Um, it was on my Amazon wish list, but I don't know who actually sent it. But whoever sent it, thank you so much. I told you I wasn't going to forget about you. I was going to get around to doing a video on it. Um, I've been doing some research and really thinking about how I want to do this. And obviously, with this figure, you actually get two miniatures in one because you've got the the Hospitaller figure, and then you've got this Casualty figure on her base. Okay. And, it's kind of a, you can kind of see her right there. You got this dead sister on the base. So, um, you may remember I did the Sisters of Battle box set uh, a little over a year ago. And in that box set, I had planned on doing the, the heavy flamer member of the Battle Sister squad as Order of the Bloody Rose. And I've, I've got the codex here look this out. Um, Order of the Bloody Rose has, if you can see that, has red armor and black robes with a white lining on there. I think that looks really visually striking. Unfortunately, due to the codex, it doesn't let you do one, like I can do the different squads in the box set as different um, orders, which I did, but it doesn't let you take an individual out of the squad and do a different do them as a different order. Well, since I've only got the one here and she's a casualty, I'm going to do her as Order of the Bloody Rose. So that's the casualty taken care of. The sister itself, the hospitaller itself, uh, right about the time the box set came out, this book came out, Requiem Infernal by Peter Ferrivari. And it talks about the Order of the Last Candle. Um, and I've been through this book, I've tried to find all the little uh, references to what the sisters look like in here. And it turns out they have, um, they have gray armor and white robes with uh, red lining. So, not entirely dissimilar to how she's pictured on the box here. But, I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this. She's going to have, uh, I'm going to use Basilicum Gray for the armor. And then uh, probably apothecary white for the robes, and then line them with um, flush terrors red. I, I think that's going to look really visually striking, and it's going to look kind of similar to this, but the uh, armor will be a little lighter colored. And then, of course, like I said, the battle sister will have this bright red armor and black robes, and she'll be pretty badass too. Now, as you can see, I've taken the um, shrink wrap off this box but I haven't actually opened it yet so I don't really know what's in here and I kind of want to do a little bit of an unboxing video as well which is why it's still in the box um, I, I really excited about this so, yeah, so let's, okay that's all out of there you got the little booklet that tells, hopefully tells how to put it together because this looks like a really complicated figure. Okay, that's good. And wow, two. Okay, normally when Games Workshop comes comes out with a figure on uh, in a box size like this, like an individual figure, it's one sprue. This one is two sprues and a fairly big base too. That's a pretty good size base. But there's. I guess here's where your hospitaller is going to sit. Here's where your casualty is on the base. And here's all the little bits and bobs of the armor and the birds and the banners. And oh wow, there is a lot going on here. This is going to be fairly awesome. See, she's got some options for hands, like she can either be giving kind of a benediction, or she could just be holding this little cross thing. I think I may do the benediction thing on her. 
and I definitely want the uh, non-helmeted head although the helmet comes in two pieces which is a little bit weird <laughs> never seen the helmet in two pieces like that before um, let me make sure I'm not just missing something and this helmet's supposed to be on the head or that the helmet's supposed to be the head not on the ground or something Man, there's okay. Yeah, the helmet goes together and then goes on the ground. And uh, apparently, you do not have the option of doing a benediction on the sister. That is, she is holding the cross, and that's it. Um, the hand holding nothing goes on the uh, casualty sister that's on the base. And she's got almost as many parts to her as she's got to like a the the uh, hospitaler herself. That is a very involved base, and of course it's got the rules and everything in here for her to use and a painting guide. But I'm not going to use that. All right, so wow, that's that's a lot of pieces and a lot of work is going to go into this. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off and get started on this because this is going to be a very very involved. Uh, video it might be might be one of my longer videos um i'll come back when i've got her assembled and then uh, we'll take a look at her and uh primer and start painting her all right so i will see you soon bye all right brush monkeys we're back and we have the sisters of battle hospitaler all assembled and she is this is a pretty impressive miniature i mean oh my god that took me that took me a few hours to get all that cleaned up and glued in and there's still some parts that I'm waiting for it to set like this wrist and there's this banner that attaches onto the back really only attaches here and up here this one this one here with the bird only attaches to in two places to like the backpack and to the arm of the apothecary thing and the apothecary thing only plugs in a little hole right there in the backpack I mean this stuff is just held on so so tiny tiny little pieces but there is a lot of detail on this girl and that sisters of battle casualty on the base is almost an entire other figure I mean you got everything short of the backpack on there you got the helmet that came in two parts so you can see that it's open on one side got the bolt gun that's molded onto the base that I still had to drill out the barrel for so I made sure that was drilled out and it's just wow there's just a lot going on here and there's still some of the base that's that's uncovered so I'm gonna need to take some texture paste and and fill that in before I really get to undercoating and and base coating this girl and she really looks fantastic um, because of the level of detail on here, I'm definitely going to have to use the Steinle Res primers. Um, a rattle can is just not going to cover it on this. You've got to go in there with an airbrush. Um, but this is really a beautiful, beautiful figure. Big base, so I'm going to have to use my large handle here to, to get her held stable. Um, I don't want to take the risk of putting her on the, the Redgrass Games handle and, and having her fall off. This is such a, such a big figure. Um, so yeah, I want a good, solid, stable thing. In fact, I even modified the base on the Citadel handle, so it's got this extra little disc on there just to make sure it doesn't, just to make sure it doesn't fall over. So yeah, I'm going to let this girl sit overnight and, uh, let that glue set up really good. And then tomorrow we'll go at her with the airbrush, or we'll put some texture paint on there and then I'll let it sit up overnight. And tomorrow we'll go at her with the airbrush and the Steinle Res primers. Zenith I'll prime her. There's a lot of room to do really cool stuff like all these little banners in the book. There's room to actually get in there and do do some like illuminated manuscript kind of thing on there. So I plan on doing that. Um, like I said the the robes are going to be white with red lining. I think that's going to be interesting. There's a couple little places like right in there I'm a little bit nervous about being able to get to because I think you can I think you can see it, but I don't know that you can necessarily paint that in there. Um, I'm not sure. 
unless you held it up to the light that you'd even be able to see that that's not painted in there that's so deep in shadow but and I had seriously given some consideration to doing this in two different stages of doing the base as one and the uh, hospitaller as another um, because there's just so much going on but I was again I was kind of afraid if I stuck her to the red grass games handle that she might fall over something might happen to damage her and then I'd just be left with the base so did the whole thing in one setting <laughs> hopefully it'll it'll come out okay with the uh, uh, with the painting so like I said I'm gonna texture the base up a little bit and then I'm going to let her sit overnight and set up and then we'll uh, primer in the morning all right see you soon see you then bye all right brush monkeys we're back and we've got the uh, sisters of battle hospital are all zenith all primed uh, went a little heavy on the white just because I, there are, she's gonna have white robes white hair I want bright vibrant colors on her so there's not as much gray and black on there but uh, it's got to where it counts so um, there's a lot going on here I'm a little bit intimidated by this figure to be honest and uh, but I think it's gonna come out really nice um, obviously I've got the paints all laid out and there's gonna be a lot of them but um, I think the finished product is gonna look really really fairly slick so um, a lot of its contrast a lot of its not contrast so I think we've got a good mix going on there um, I obviously I've got the base textured out so that it blends with the molded base to the edge of the plastic base and you can't really can't really tell where one ends and one begins anymore which is the end goal there that was supposed to that was, that was what was supposed to be going on there so I'm kind of happy with that um, in the meantime I guess I'll just pause and start painting hope it comes out okay <laughs> right so uh, I'll see y'all in a bit <laughs> bye all right I'm back and I made some progress um, I did the hospitalers skin with uh, Gulliman flesh I did the dead sisters dying sisters uh, flesh with um, dark oath flesh and I've got the base started at least the background of it the black Templar and I've got the uh, Hospitaller's armor uh, done up with the uh, contrast paints. And it's all looking pretty good. Um, I got out the snakebite leather because I realized that she has that little uh, pistol uh, scabbard on the back there. I got out the um, Tesseract Glow because I'm going to do the instrument panel on her little uh, Narthesium there and some of the stuff on her backpack here and possibly some of the things on her apothecary instrument in that and then I got out the Mephiston Red um, having said that now I got that out for a reason I just don't recall what the reason was <laughs> <laughs> Um, anyway, I've uh, still got some contrast paints to go on this puppy, so I'm going to go ahead and continue on with that. Try to get the whites and the reds done. And then we'll come back when I've made some more progress. Alright, see you soon. Okay, I've made some more progress as you can see. I've got the red on the casualties armor done, and the black, and white, and even got the little grenade painted there. I got the white and red on her robes painted. I remembered what the Mephiston Red was for, is for that this little hose going between her Narthesium and her backpack. So I went ahead and painted that. Um, coming up next, it looks like I've got the Metallics to do. And then, uh, basically I paint the Metallic on the gun, and there's a couple of shell casings on the ground there. And uh, touch up a couple little spots on the, on the base where the white hit it. And then uh, she's got some gold on her armor and a gold cross thing here. 
and then her whatever this thing is this apothecary thing here I got that to deal with and I think I got to touch up the birds but I'm gonna do them after I do the parchments so yeah so that, she's coming along slowly but surely she's coming along I got the outside of her book painted I need to do that little icon in gold probably and then uh, once I get the metallics painted I'll go back and do the parchment that the birds are carrying and the book and I'll show you a neat trick for doing the book that's a lot easier than a lot of people say a lot of people say you have to do uh, little thin squiggly lines with a brush and and really really watered down paint I have found an easier way using micron pens but we'll get to that in a little bit right now I'm gonna go ahead and take a break here and then I'm gonna start in on the metallics All right so I will see you soon bye all right so I've made some progress on the metallics you can see I've got the little gold rosary and whatnot on her I actually painted that grenade too I did that before I just forgot to mention it um, got the metallics on the gun done up got all the gold on her painted backpack on the back of a I got all the uh, Tesseract glow pieces painted and they look really good I think that's a really nice little spot color for this uh, figure and it it makes everything look like it's lighting up and it makes it look like it's um, it's a nice contrast to the reds um, I've got the birds painted although I'm not real happy with the level of detail on them that's mostly to do with the sculpt I do have the stuff I call whitewash which is a mix of um, Druky Violet, no, not Druky Violet, um, Drakenhoff Nightshade, Null Noil, and uh, Thinner. So it's a very, very, very thin wash, and it looks great when it's painted over uh, white bits like that. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of that on the birds, and then um, I'll be ready. I think I'll be ready to start it on the parchments, because. Uh, the parchment is really all I got left on this girl. She's looking really good. You can see I got all the little brass shell casings all around the base. And she got off a lot of shots too before she got taken down. So um, the one paint I'm going to do the uh, Green Stuff World True Blood. I'm going to do that after I matte seal the whole thing. So I've got those little parchment bits left to do and I'm gonna do the base band and I'll probably transfer it to another holder for that and then um, after I matte seal uh, excuse me I've got the uh, dragon scale wax for the base band as well and match it with the rest of my army and once all that's done and I matte seal it then I'll paint a little bit of the true blood going from those bullet holes there so it'll still show up as glossy on the finished figure but yeah she's coming along pretty nicely now so I'm gonna go ahead and pause and uh, shade wash the birds and shade wash the uh, gold thing here and then uh, we'll come back and see how it looks get started on the parchment all right see you soon bye all right brush monkeys I've got the uh, if you can see them I've got the birds all shade washed, so now there's a little bit of a little bit more difference between the bodies and the wings, and uh, bodies and the heads and that kind of thing. We've got pretty much everything on her done except for the parchments and the book, so I'm going to go ahead and do those now. And I'm looking for fairly light colored pages, uh, fairly light colored paper on this, so it shows off the the ink pens when I go to do that. So I'm starting out with Shop T Bone, and then I'll highlight it with, um, well, I'll, I'll uh, shade wash that with a little bit of um, Seraphim Sepia, and then I'll layer it with uh, Screaming Skull here, bring that back up. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now, and then uh, we'll come back and I'll show you the results, and then we'll get into doing the pens. All right, so I'll see you soon. All right, as you can see, I've got the parchments based and shade washed. 
it's going to take they look really dark now when I go over it with the shop teeth bone they'll lighten up I think I might go back in and layer it back up with the uh, shop teeth bone and then do the screaming skull as a highlight just to lighten them up um, and once I do that you'll see how much lighter they get and uh, these pages will separate here so you'll see the little lines it looks really good I also highlighted the gold on her breastplate and head and the little thing there so um, so that's done since the uh, shade wash on the parchments is kind of what I'm waiting on to be able to finish her up I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take a break here and let those dry and then we'll come back finish up the parchments and then I'll show you how to do the lettering on them and the lettering on the book and then uh, we'll be pretty close to being done it'll be time to transfer her to uh, another handle and do the baseband so I'm pretty happy with how she's coming along and I think she's gonna look pretty fantastic when she's done so like I said I'm gonna go ahead and take a little break here and then we'll come back and finish her up all right see you soon all right, so now we got all the parchments done, painted up, and they look pretty nice, all shade washed in places. I'm going to go into how to do the um, script on them with a micron pen. Now you want something, this is a 0.01 micron, and it's blue. The usual one I use is a, is a 0 0.005 micron, it's quite a bit smaller, but the 5 will work for um, usually in illuminated manuscripts you see the initial letter is uh, bigger than the rest of it so I'm gonna see if I could do this on camera and obviously at this scale you're not going to be able to read what you're writing so you're not gonna try for actual letters gonna go for a square with a little squiggle in it there that's your initial letter Okay. Go focus in. Come on, focus. Come on, focus, you dirtbag. Okay, that's about as focused as you're going to get. Okay, so there's that. And then with the brown micron pen, and I always use brown instead of black because most illuminated manuscripts <coughs> are kind of faded. They're old. They're not going to be um, not going to be brand new typeset and you just write in little squiggles next to it now the great thing about the micron pens is it allows you to get more detail and more consistency out of your writing than you would with a brush with a brush you're gonna get um, you're gonna have some uh, some spots where the paint is thicker, some where it's not as thick, and it's gonna it's gonna be seriously inconsistent and look weird. It's not gonna look like handwriting. I'm trying to keep this on camera. Some of these little spaces may be a little hard to get to. That's fine. Like I said, you're not trying to make out actual legible writing. You're just looking to do little squiggly lines next to each other. You want the lines fairly close together because again you're talking about something that was written on <coughs> and that's really all you could see of that one so turn around turn around do the same thing on the back um, because both sides of the parchment are visible on this one you can do you can do scripts on both sides One side may be a little more quote unquote legible than the other. And you could do a few different paragraphs too. Like you can do do squiggles down to a certain point and then try to hold this steady while I'm doing this. Try to break up the length of your lines too, so you're not all one line like that. But kind of do 
couple little short lines. Maybe sign off on one and then get a little space. Do another initial. Start a new paragraph. And these uh these little micron pens can be found at Michael's Hobby Lobby. Pretty much I like Prismacolor because they got nice vibrant colors and their ink lasts a really really long time. But there's a couple different brands. And don't worry if it doesn't look real neat, like your your initial square isn't perfectly square, because as they're fond of telling us in the SCA, if it's perfect, it's not period. It doesn't look like it was handmade if it's a perfect little square. So there you go. Got all those limited manuscripts. The book is kind of done the same way. Um, <clears throat> it's going to be a little bit harder to do on on. Uh, on camera but basically you just now what you could do here you can do way out to the edges of the book make it look like an illuminated manuscript and then like that there you go just like that looks like an illuminated manuscript looks really nice we'll just continue on with the rest of them I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off and continue on with that and then we'll uh, transfer her over to uh, another handle and uh, do the base band and finish her up. So she's looking pretty good so far. Let's see if I can zoom in on that book a little bit. Look at that. That looks pretty spiffy. Alright, All right, see you soon. And there she is, Brush Monkeys, the finished Sisters of Battle Hospitaller, painted in the colors of the Last Candle from the Requiem Infernal novel. And this is a pretty spectacular model, and I think she looks pretty good. There's a lot of detail on there, a lot of stuff on there. If you're going to do your own, I would strongly suggest painting the, the sister and the base separately, so you can get at all those little nooks and crannies on the base and some of the ones on her robe although you know there's you can't really see inside to the back of the robe very well so probably not entirely necessary but it it is enormously helpful um, as you can see I've done the blood effects on the base there some blood coming out of the sister's mouth uh, I put gloss on the vials on the back of her backpack and her computer screens and her little narthesium screen and that needle coming out of the top there and um, she's looking really good so yeah so thanks for watching and uh, next week we'll get into something new all right see you next week bye Hey Brush Monkeys, Tom from Flying Monkey Studios here. If you like what you see, click like down below 
Um, if you want to be notified when new videos come out, click subscribe. Both of those help me with my YouTube numbers and help support me doing and what, what I do best. Um, speaking of which, uh, if you want to support me more directly, you can visit my Patreon site um, and go on my Instagram page to see uh, all the miniatures that I paint on this site and how to get your hands on one of your own if you want one. We're also on Facebook and Twitter. You can check both of those to see when new videos get posted. And visit my merch store at uh, storefrontier.com slash flymonkeystudios. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching, and I will see you later. Bye.